raised hand. What's up? What are they, Mayor? Uh, hi, for uh, just a second, okay? Okay. Why you are you writing down your question? <laughs> Okay, meanwhile, let me stop this and start the other one. <clears throat> Where is the other Hello? One? Hello! Yeah, so uh, my question is, when we copy uh, the one string to another, like std string, okay? Okay. We copy the address from one string to another, right? You are, to are you talking about string class or you're talking about string, the C string, the array? No, no, sin is string class. String class, you don't worry about it. It, it, it. Rule of five is applied to that. It, it does it by. It does it for you. It copies it. So I shouldn't worry about it, right? No, if you do one object of a string being set to another object of a string, no worries. If you have address of a string set to another address of a string, then you need to worry. Okay. So it's usual. If you have a pointer to something, you need to worry about it. Correct? Yeah, at, at some point I figured out that, um, so I, sh I apply, uh, like in the workshop, we use uh, a rule of five uh -huh. uh, to uh, copy and move, True. and okay. I create a destructor, mm -hmm. but that destructor doesn't work. So I, sh I should leave it empty, right? If with the destructor empty. doesn't work, it means it, you messed around with memory. Um... I don't know if I'm following properly or not. What if the destructor doesn't work? It means you corrupted memory somewhere. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, that, that that's the point. Be because we use the resources outside the class. You only take care of those. Yeah. Yeah. So the, uh, the in the main fun in the main file like uh, main function mm -hmm. you, uh, the like the professor who created this uh, workshop yes. deleted everything at, at the very end. Okay, so that means that because I'm using this object, which will be deleted in the main function, uh -huh. I should not delete it in the classes that just use these resources. True. Right? True. True. Okay. If I understood correctly, true. <laughs> yeah, that's, for that, that's really, I don't know about other students, but this workshop is really hell mode, you know? I know. It's that's a, it's and, and paper it's... chili. Well, I'm struggling mm. like three days well, from early three, morning four, to the five. night. Welcome to OOP three four five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I it's it like Seneca trying to kill us, you know. No, it's not killing. It's just uh, actually these are very straightforward concepts, but to grasp them, you need to sweat a little. Yeah, that yeah, I understand that it's it's not really hard concept, but you know that when you try to like you know this to put this all these puzzles together to understand this concept because. Uh, like instructions it's not clear like do this and do that oh very easy but oh, when yeah, you yeah. try to deep inside you oh i i need this for uh, this uh, like a uh, copy constructor it's didn't mention okay i will do that and then, and then okay i have a problem with memory i should do this you know and you going deeper and deeper and that's really hard really i know i know worry, I, I sympathize just uh, uh just uh voice of my soul you know like. i know i know do you remember last semester what i told you Anyways, uh, what? nothing never mind <laughs> okay. okay yeah 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 i remember okay i got you okay. all right so yeah, uh you. so uh i actually have to get the thing because the, uh, the workshop five is up too and i didn't get its uh uh get it settings so uh, so you can submit it and I have to uh, I'll do it so uh, after the, the when you are doing your quiz I'll do all those so be aware next week you have your midterm um, um, uh, you're gonna have your midterm and uh, the, the days will be set so I'll tell you it's gonna be open for 48 hours and you have the usual things that you did in OP244 so you're gonna have concept questions and debugging and, and and programming so that's what you're going to do and the good old stuff that you're doing that we have done in class essentially you do all those things and you'll be just fine uh, um, I'll put, put an announcement for it to to tell you in detail exactly when and how it's going to be so uh, 
uh, be ready for it. Next week, you're going to have uh, um, your midterm. Okay, now that we're over with that, so to actually explain functors, I have to bring the old stuff in too. So I'm going to go to uh, add existing item. I don't want to add any existing item. I just want to go to the previous day and bring those three things in. Copy and bring them here. Paste. Uh, sorry for that. Yes. I cannot see your desktop. Your actual desktop? Yeah. Because I have oh, yeah, not, you're not sharing. Yeah. Because I have not shared it. I forgot. Okay. <laughs> but you, you're just telling, okay, I copy this, I copy that. <laughs> what, what My apologies. No problem. Just a second. <clears throat> My nose is itchy. I'm about to sneeze. I just want to get rid of. Ah, oh, God! It's as if like 50 ants are walking in there. All right. So, my apologies <laughs> that you had to see that. I should have turned my camera off. Uh, no, Ahmed, I did not do that. Actually, remind me at the end of the class to to uh, to upload the recording to uh, to pub make the recording public. Um, and if you have any friends in OOP three four five, you can always ask them to send you the link because anybody in my class they can get in and copy the link and send it to anyone. So. Um, uh, if you have any friends, you can just ask for its link. But um, please tell me on uh, on Microsoft Teams. Remind me on Microsoft Teams, and I'm gonna uh, um, and I'm gonna uh, put it on. It's not that I upload automatically; it gets posted by black by uh, big blue button. I have to just move uh, copy the link and post it on uh, on the on the GitHub. But the problem is that it it takes time to um, to process and I forget so so that's that so uh, somebody asked me to review um, uh, the functors who was it uh, I oh okay so uh, do, are you okay with uh, function pointers yeah okay I that, yeah. so functors is the one that we want to actually we want to actually deal with and understand how they work okay so when we are dealing with functors uh, essentially uh, you know what operator overloading is right yes okay so if i have a class over here foo okay and now everybody can see my string screen right yes yes okay so i have a class screen foo over here and i have over here int a10 okay and i create uh an operator saying int reference operator operator index and i put over here say int index and i pass over here return a i a index do you understand this code Yes, like uh, we have overloaded the operator index for the, the index exactly, and I pass an index to it, and this operator index gets set, and yada yada yada. Are we good with this? Yep. Okay. So forget about that. Okay, I'm gonna call this an add. Okay, you can actually <clears throat> overload. You can actually overload uh, an operator for a function call, which is essentially this. If you recall in OOP 244, I told everyone, hey guys, you cannot, um, like, uh, um, um, when people were actually writing functions without parentheses, I would tell them that, hey, um, that's, that's going to extract the address of the thing. Um, so let me just go back to that. When you, when you have a, so forget about this for now, have those, that index in mind. <clears throat> okay so if i have over here function foo so void foo and in here see out whatever now um and obviously i need
So, if I write over here <clears throat> foo, what is going to happen? Uh, call to the foo function. At line Fantastic. 10. Yeah, very simple, right? Yes. Now, if I write over here int and I return 10, what is going to happen now? Uh, no difference, yeah. right? Yeah. I just returned 10 into cyberspace, right? Yes. Okay. Now, if I say foo and l, what is the output? It's kind of tricky now. What are you going to see? Uh, whatever. whatever 10. Yeah, so es essentially what is going to happen is going to be whatever and the next line 10 is going to get printed. Are we good? Yes. Okay. Now tell me what is going to get printed. Whatever. That's going to get printed. You know what is that? Address of the function. Address of the logic oh. of the function in memory. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Do you remember that? Point. Yeah, point. Pointer to function. Remember that? Yeah. So yeah, tell me, Abe, what is the difference between these two lines? That one prints the address and the other one calls the function. What is the difference between the two? Uh, as of, uh, I remember, like, you told that, like... What is... No, 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 literally, the, literally. Function. And you're a seven-year-old, I'm putting these two pictures, and I'm telling you, what is the difference between line 16 and 17? Tell me, what is the difference? Uh, curly brace is added to the line 17. Thank you. Okay? So, the only difference between a function address and calling a function is the parentheses, correct? Yes. So, parentheses actually is an operator to call a function. Okay. Yeah. So if I if I write over here integer a and I write over here a like that, okay, what is going to compiler tell me? It's gonna say expression preceding parentheses of apparent call must have pointer to function type. You hear that? You see that? It's yeah. telling me, hey, you are trying to call A. A is an integer. A is not a function. Therefore, we have to understand parentheses in front of a variable <clears throat> tells to the compiler the variable is a pointer to a function, and I want to call it. Do we understand this? Yes, I would. Now, if I actually put some kind of a value in there, I am telling to compiler, I not only want to call this, but I also want to pass this to that logic. Do we understand that? Uh, just to confirm, like, yeah, we are here telling, like, call the logic of another function with the passing this value. Passing the, of course, it's going to give me an error because int an A is an A, right? Okay. And yeah. even if I put foo over here, it's going to give me an error. It's going to say, now you're calling a function, but foo doesn't accept a 10 right yeah. yes okay are we clear on this abby yeah beautiful so now we understood how compiler recognizes something should be called correct yes let's overload that so in here i'm gonna say int operator function call and in here i'm gonna put int a and int b okay And in here, I'm going to say return um, A plus B. Are we okay with this? Uh, yeah. Now, if I do something like this, I can actually create an instance of add. Okay. Now, foo is an instance of add, correct? Yes. Operator parentheses is overloaded for any object of add, correct? Yeah. Therefore, I can call, use the operator in front of the object name, correct? Yes. And I can pass some value to that exactly how it's supposed to be. As you pass an index to the index operator, you pass arguments to a function call operator. Are we okay with that? Yeah, okay. and therefore I can actually go see out and this foo is called as if 
it was a function okay because i overloaded the function operator for that class are we good okay yeah so like uh any object of a class behaves like a function is it a function yeah so <laughs> let me see uh what did we develop last did we did i give an example of any class last time before like in previous classes let me just see if i can find something in previous notes uh, we did a smart integer we did a smart integer yeah where is that mm. oh we did a smart integer yeah but that um uh, not a good example i want to this is all concept yeah we did a smart integer you're right this in thingy that we have done that doesn't make sense anyways what i want to say i just wanted to give you an example of, of an R, an already i create an on anything that i created remember you can make any class a functor that class doesn't have to be only for functor purposes you understand that uh, yeah i understand you can have that integer thingy and overload the function call for it therefore the object of integer if it's called something hap will happen yes although it doesn't make sense for that smart integer that we created but for any class if you require you can create a function call what good does it do the good that it does is that it can actually have state for your function you can actually keep track of things in your function for example I want to give you a good example I'll give you a good example we I have a good example we already created the example let me add the project over here so for example if I want to like remember last time when we actually wanted to pass logic to a function for evaluation we actually had to pass the address of the fun function and keep the address of the function do you remember that oh uh, yeah yeah so that I'm gonna bring that example up open 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 uh, add existing project um, three four five two one one I hope that's gonna stay here I don't have to keep going through this 55 let me just copy this so I don't have to okay so let's go to int function pointer right <clears throat> when we created this thing to be able to pass to be able to pass the evalu uh, the validation logic to our uh, and that's std how did this thing work huh it actually worked how is it possible <laughs> anyway so yeah as i was saying uh, in here, as I uh, uh, pass the address of the validation, then inside the the integer itself, I could actually check to see if the validation exists, and then do call the validation when I needed it. Do you remember that? Uh, uh, who was the person who asked the question? Abe. Abe. Do you remember that, Abe? Yeah, I remember. Okay. Now having that. Let's go to the next project. Oh, it went there. Good. So in here, instead of actually creating a standalone function, if we looked at this one in here, I had to be non-object oriented, a non-object oriented programmer, which means I had to have Sorry, I want my, I think I ruined the program in here. Yeah, this this doesn't have belong to that. Anyways, if I wanted to, to call this integer, I had to actually create validation functions, standalone helper validation functions, and pass to this int. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but for, but when I actually, 
I, I ruined that one. I have to fix it. Uh, the main for uh, function pointer. I hope the functor is, is okay. So, but now if I actually look at my functor, when I get in here, instead of actually passing uh, a validation uh, uh, pointer, function pointer to the object, I can create a hierarchy of validation classes. So essentially, I'm going to say a validation class is a validation class that accept that that can uh, uh, be done several times. I need to know how many times. I need to know how many times I have done it. It returns it. And it has an operator for calling it that returns a Boolean and a value and a message to set. So essentially, this functor of mine can be called passing an integer uh, and a string for the message. So now, instead of worrying if I have to pass the address of the function, I simply instantiate the object and pass the object around. An object would carry, will carry the logic with it. So my code will actually turn to something like this. I'm going to have a validation created. I'm going to have a validation created um, for uh, a valid age. So that's the class that I created. And in the functor, in the function uh, operator of that valid age, I'm going to do a proper validation for an age and proper message setting for an age, where in a valid mark class for validation, I'm going to overload the function operator to accept an integer again with a string, but I do the logic for a valid age and a proper message for that. And obviously, all the validations can tell us how many times they have been called because they are objects now and not functions. They can keep track of how many times they've been called. So in my program, I can actually do things wisely. I create the validation object for the age. I create the validation object for the, for the mark. Then <clears throat> um, I uh, create the, uh, the valid uh, uh integer of mine and I pass the valid age functor to it and therefore the validation of the integer smart integer will happen using the function operator of the valid age and therefore it's going to happen through validation for the age and um, I can overload the CN operator to make it make sure that everything is actually done properly for it. So the CN that actually reads the smart integer of mine, that actually will test. So let's go to smart integer of ours. If I actually look at the CN, CN of mine will actually call the get and get of mine will actually go through the validation and make sure that it's done properly up to certain times and then the validation is true and so on and so forth it passes through it and it's going to get the value and and um, it will call it and uh, uh, make sure that the validation and everything is set properly so so these are all perfectly good with absolutely no problem oh that's not the one this is the one yeah Oh, what happened? I think I even screwed up the the bodies of all these things. Let me see. This is. Oh no, this is the pointer. This is actually good. No, this is correct. Yeah, and it checks the number of tries. So yeah, this is the good one. Yeah. So this one actually checks the number of tries, and it goes through it, and everything's fine. So um, it, that did I cover it, or uh, um, or um, you got confused more uh, way back? Are we okay with this with the functors? Yeah, I'm okay. I will get well, but walk next. through it and it's going to get more clear. Okay? Yeah. All right. So let me close this one. And bring up the PRG. Okay, so that was the functor one. So in here I'm going to say a... Um, functor dot c actually a dash functor dot cp a dash functor dot cpp okay so <clears throat> sometimes 
when sometimes you want to have certain type of logic and execute it only once not twice so you want you have something you just want to execute it once and not the second time if I want to do something like that how do I write the code for it so like for example if I want to draw a line if I want to draw a line void line and in here I'm gonna say integer len that's L and in here what I will do is a for loop for uh, integer I I set to zero <laughs> it's actually correcting it for me thank you very much and I less than L and uh, C out and I'm gonna put a dash in here dash in here and I'm gonna uh, what do I'm gonna do I'm gonna uh, add one to the value of I and that's gonna be my line So this is my function, a very simple function that I want to only write it once to draw a line. Oh gosh, this correction thingy that it does. Darn it. I want it to be a single line. You Okay, there we go. Now in here I can say line 30 and uh, draws a, it draws a line for me. Oh, age please. Thank you very much. Okay. No, um, let me set this as startup projects. Set as startup. 18 plus only allowed for drawing <laughs> a line. <laughs> All right. So there you go. So it draws a line for 30 characters. Are we okay with this? If you're not okay with this, we have to go back to IPC 144. So are we okay with this, ladies and gents? All right, so if you want, if you do not want to actually write this code because you only want to do use it once, what you can do is this. You can just copy this. Okay, so I copied it and I'm going to just get rid of this. You can write that line right in here. And that damn thing is doing that again that I didn't want it to do and there you go okay so you just do it like this then you can tell to uh, the C++ that this is a one-time only function and I want to call it using 30 and done so the function that you only wanted to write it once you write it this indicates that this is a one-timer function and so this essentially this is line so you say line 30 you actually put the whole definition of what you want to do in a single line and you run it and it runs it for you this we call a lambda Lambda expression. And this is a literal function. Are we okay with this? So, for example, in this function pointer thingy that you had, remember this function pointer thingy that <clears throat> your program in here, I don't know what, let me just see if I can find the main for that function pointer that I screwed up over there. Where did I have it? Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Um, do I have it here? Yeah, this is the one. Copy that. Hmm. 
Okay, so I'm going to bring that up. I just want to make sure that I'm not going to make a mistake again. So this is the one. I think this is the one. If I run it, save it. So first of all, did we understand the lambda expression, what it is, like how it's defined? So this is essentially your function, okay? And this tells to the compiler that what's coming is a lambda expression, and then you put the values right in front of it. Are we okay with this? And if I want to, and if I want to reuse this thing, so if I want to reuse my line now over and over and do it again, I could have done this actually. Instead of doing that, I could do this. I could say, I could say auto, I could say auto line equals to, and do it like that because uh, automatically it's going to, get whatever it is and put the type over here, line actually becomes my function, the function that I want to use. So now I can actually say line 50. So this line of mine is actually, so first one is a lambda and the second one is the line that I have written in lambda style. So uh, these are functions that I only want to use in main and no one else, nowhere else I want to use. So if you want to you call it explicitly only once, that's how you do it. If you want to write a little function in main and just use it in main and nowhere else, you can do it like that and do it as lambda. Simple and straightforward. Are we okay with this? So, because now this operator over here, because this operator over here is actually, um, because this operator over here, this, uh, sorry, this fun this um, variable that we have in main is part of the scope of main, the scope of this lambda, so let me just put this for lambda example, so first I'm going to put over here, mm. Um, B lambda dot cpp. Lambda dot cpp, lambda dot cpp. There you go. Okay. So this is the lambda thingy there. Okay. Let's say I have over here integer L. And I'm going to set that one to 30. If I do something like this, what's going to happen? How can I make this code actually have access to what I have in there? Can I actually do something like that to make it? What, how do I actually make the code actually access variables that I have inside? Now take a look. When I do something like this, obviously I don't want that. If I put something like this in here, I'm saying that line of mine in here actually has access, this lambda expression has access to the variables of main, but if I do this, what's going to happen? Let's say after C out, I'm going to do over here L++. So I'm adding one to the value of L after everything is done. As you see over here, this L is an, is, is, it becomes a constant here that you cannot actually change. So the value will not change if you use equal. How do I make that actually changeable? And this is what you do. Now if I put reference over here, it means inside my lambda expression, I have access. So let's do it like this. So in here, line r that's the reference and line <laughs> one is right so this is this has write access and this has read access okay so if i do something like this it means this guy will be an error error no access no right access okay but what did I do wrong 
Oh, because I have a line. Now, if I do line R over here, okay, line R is going to print uh, the 30 thing that I have. But if I do line W a few times, as you see, it's going to keep adding to the value. Let me just make it a little bigger so we can actually see what we have done. I'm going to be pink three because that's um, one is not enough. <coughs> and there you go. Okay. So you can actually make your lambda expression function have partial access, either read access or read write access to the uh, local variables in which they, it has been defined. Are we okay with this? All right. to scope variables. I'm not going to say local. To local. Because it could be file access or whatever. Whatever that, that uh, variable it has access to. With it's access to local objects. <clears throat> so that's that one. So a good example for it is this. It's, it's actually um, what we have. I think I, I think I got this one from the notes. So so this actually shows all the things. So uh, different types of access that you can have to a Lambda expression. Uh, this one has read-write access. This one has no access. This one has uh, read-write access to A again. Um, uh, so you could, let me just bring it, there we go. So if you individually want to have different types of, let me just separate these Lambda expressions so it's not confusing. So that's one Lambda. That's another lambda, another lambda. Yeah, so you can say, I want to have read access, okay, to everything. I want to have read write access to everything. I want to have read write access to I, but only regular access to A. I want to have regular access to A, read write access to I. I want to have access to everything but read access only to A. I want to have read access to everything but read write access only to I. So you can set things like that specifically if you want different types and you can comma separate it and have, have as many as var variables as you want to set them in any way you like. Uh, walk through this and you'll see how it's going to be. Are we okay with this? So this is with a read-write access control. Okay. Now, obviously, <sighs> Just a second. Remember that lambda variables can be set into lambda functions can be set into variables and carry around the lambda expressions if we want to. You can always take advantage to that and convert um, and use the values you're passing as a template. Take a look. I'm creating a template over here and I'm going to say template type name func. Okay. So the function, so I templated the function that I want to pass to I and I'm going to call that function. And the same thing over here and I'm going to call that function. Now you can actually either call this using a function pointer if you want to that accepts one integer or you can simply create a lambda expression 
and pass the lambda expression as the variable. And as you see, the lambda expression over here is accepting a single integer. And it's uh, passing whatever value that is needed and so on and so forth over here. So whatever it's doing, this is adding this as, as subtraction and addition. So you can pass lambda expression as the function templates and pass it around with absolutely no problem. Are we okay with this? Which brings us to the next. This lambda expression makes things quite different. Like in future, when we're going to actually start working with uh, uh, standard template library, you'll see that we're going to have algorithms over there that you can simply call a, a sort algorithm and pass it a lambda expression for comparison. And the sort algorithm will use that lambda expression of your to, to sort whatever that is needed to be sorted. So again, we're going to come to it. You see what is the use of lambda expressions. Okay. So this is, uh, this is not C. This is supposed to be D. And this is A. So lambda passed as uh, template type, template uh, value, which brings us to the smart integer. So let's add, uh, we had BC, let's add D and E, so add existing project D. Uh, hold on for a second, my apologies. Apologies. So now take a look at our smart integer and see what are the changes to that one. This uh, smart integer that I have is the same one that I use with a function to pointer as you see that. A pointer to a function as you see that. So embedded over here is essentially a function pointer. And look when I actually in main. So this is exactly what I've done in the first example with fun fun pointer to functions. But when you uh but wait to take a look at this one and i have uh um let me just come at this this is the integer one uh, so the the source code for integer let's come over here and take a look now in here when i want to call the mark i'm not going to create these and these are exactly the uh, v uh validation functions that i had over there that i just wrote it compressed so i'm saying over here int mark as you see so i'm creating a mark but in the second argument of the integer that I am supposed to pass to the pointer to a function, as you see, validation logic, I pass a lambda. So I simply say, create, create an integer mark for me with following lambda expression, which sets the string to valid mark is this and that and returns this as true and false. Or... Uh, the more complicated lambda expression. If you do not want to write it again, and this is something that you don't want to have as a dangling function in your <clears throat> uh, uh, static scope, and you don't want to, you only want to do this once, then only logic dictates to have the logic <clears throat> in the lambda expression right when you are creating age and you're going to say this age of mine is receiving an integer and a string and these are exactly what you have done uh, what, what this is exactly what you have done which is returning a boolean and everything is set properly and therefore your age will be validated through your lambda expression <clears throat> as uh, the function calls i'm not going to go walk through it you know exactly what it is because it is literally identical to this example <clears throat> where I had the valid age separately written now I have the exact same logic in a lambda expression simple and straightforward 
Uh, are we okay with this? <clears throat> so lambda express expressions are usually small little things that you create. Lambda expressions are usually small little things that you create, but give me a second, Darang. <clears throat> yeah, small little things that you create, but you don't have to. It it can be a big big function too. Yes, you were saying. <clears throat> Darang. I'm oh, sorry. No no question. No question. Okay. Okay. So that's that, and the. Um, so this is uh, the, no, the normal thing that we have with uh, all the validations and stuff that I have done. And as you see, I have used the static integer in here to actually find out how many times I have done the validation. So because I don't have a state here anymore, it's not a functor anymore, I will have to somehow remember how many times I have done validation, and that's what's going to happen. So th it, it, it literally tells me how many times I have validated it, and that's it. Uh, but it cannot stop me of uh, um, uh, entering something a few more times because um, I'm not changing anything outside of this uh, uh, lambda expression, which brings us back, brings us to the next example. So now... Let's let's use the lambda expression, the exact lambda expression that we had, but this time we're gonna use uh, uh, we're gonna use uh, 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 the capture so we can actually capture the values outside. So this time I'm gonna have the number of tries in my main, and I'm gonna ask my lambda expression to modify that one. So just to uh, make it clear and, and easier to understand, this is what I'm gonna do. Um, I think if I put a semicolon over here, no. Did I change my integer over here? Uh, did I add an extra thing to it? Let me just see. Oh, this one I didn't put a uh, initial value for my integer. So my initial value for the integer is zero. So this one is receiving just the function for validation which is a boolean that receives an integer and ran and uh, um, the string that is actually uh, um, sending back as a as a value that's why it's only one so um, essentially I'm gonna pass one lambda expression that captures the the values inside it and it's essentially setting the string to whatever it is adds to the number of tries oh. Sorry about that. Adds to the number of tries, <coughs> returns the value, and that's the end of my function, and this is the end of my object. So now I'm passing a lambda, changing, a, a, capturing a local variable for the try to see if um, too many tries were, ha were happening at the time or not. So I can actually test it outside. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is... Uh, um, uh, capturing values with lambda, but in my opinion, none of these is as good as writing functors. Functors are so elegant, and they are objects. You can set them to any values you want, and uh, you, it, it can carry uh, information from previous execution. It's a beautiful thing to use if you are actually using. Um, uh, if you have a choice, functor is your friend, I believe. It's my uh, opinion on the matter. Are we okay down to here? So, <clears throat> say we want to play a game. Okay, so let's uh, reboot our brains. And by the way, we have a quiz on... I think 2.05, you received the announcement. Anyway, remembers what was the time for it? Let me check. Yeah, 2.05. So 2.05, we have a quiz. So probably our, I'll let you go 10 minutes beforehand. Um, and I'll finish what I'm supposed, supposed to say today, and then we'll continue the next day. So, uh, so let's assume we want to play a game. What is our game? This is our game. 
I have series of rows of people standing. So I have some people standing over here. Okay, these are people standing from top. I'm watching them. And then I have the second series of people standing over here. And I have third series of people standing over here. So the third ones are here. So these are row of people standing in line. Are we okay with this? <laughs> okay. Then what I would do, I have a, it's a game we are playing, right? So I have, a, and let's actually mark them with, with numbers so, so we know what we are dealing with. So this one is row one. This one is row two. Actually, let's do it better. Uh, something that we can actually easily see. So this one is row one. This one is row two, and this one is row three. So having said that, and have, now having that one, let's uh, start our game. So let's say I have a person standing over here. So I have an individual standing over here. And this individual throws a ball in this direction. Okay? So it throws a ball in this uh direction we ask the people who are standing at we are asking the people who are standing on a first row to capture any soccer ball that is passing through so if the what is passing over here is a soccer ball then that's the first row is going to catch it if it's not soccer ball, they're just going to let go. The second one over here is going to capture, um, say, a baseball. Okay? So the second one is going to receive a baseball. So if a baseball is, is, is thrown, it's going to be caught by the second row. The third row, I ask them to... capture a ball of any kind okay and at the end when I'm done okay ah let it be just like this so question now questions are starting please answer okay if I throw write a number in response please so your answer is which row Okay, if I throw a baseball, which row is going to catch it? All right. If I throw a volleyball, which row is going to catch it? Perfect. If I throw a, um, a basketball, who's going to catch it? Somebody said one. That's soccer, not basketball. <laughs> if I throw a soccer ball, who's going to catch it? There we go. Now let's modify this. Now, now if I throw a carton of milk, who's going to catch it? Carton of milk, who's going to catch it? No one. It's going to drop on the floor. We're going to have milk everywhere. That's the thing. That's when uh, uh, the program is going to crash. That's when the game goes bad. Okay? So, <clears throat> so in here, I'm going to actually fix that. So in here, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to actually have the third row over here. And the third row of mine is going to capture. So in third row in here, I'm going to say, hey, you, uh, sorry, fourth row. So row number four over here is going to, so row number four in here is going to capture anything that passes through. So anything that passes through, so anything. 
that passes through number four will catch it. So now if somebody throws, I don't know, uh, 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 if somebody throws a golf ball, uh, which uh, uh, row is going to, if somebody throws a, um, a golf ball, which row is going to catch it? Perfect, exactly. Somebody said four. Really? It's a ball. It's a golf ball. It's three. Three is going to catch it. Not four. Not anything. Okay? And the four I have to make.